Yeah. Oh yes. This is this is what dreams are made of. Hi, I'm Saul. I'm a professional chef, and in this box are all the ingredients for $167 chicken parmesan. Hi, I'm Gabby. I'm a home cook, and these are my $19 chicken parmesan ingredients. I can already tell this is gonna be a long day. <laughs> Heritage chicken parmesan with homemade burrata and arrabbiata sauce. Arrabbiata, I need to work on my Italian a little bit. Today's the day. I had some excellent ingredients to work with it. For my chicken, I had a whole heritage chicken to butcher myself. I was gonna cook it with some aged Parmesan, panko, breadcrumbs, and cacho cavallo cheese. I don't even know what kind of cheese this is. It's a big piece of cheese, though. <laughs> For my arrabbiata sauce, I have some fresh heirloom tomatoes. This is Bruce. <laughs> Bruce the big onion. Oh, I'm sorry, tomato. He's a tomato. It's Monday. And Calabrian chilies. Oh, wait, that's new. I didn't expect chili peppers. Cool. And I had everything I needed for some homemade burrata and arugula salad. Mozzarella curd. More cheese. <laughs> heavy cream, wild arugula, more cacho cavallo, and a balsamic vinegar. I hope I remembered to bring the lactate pill. <laughs> it was going to be delicious, you thieves. With Gabby's recipe, I have simpler ingredients. Stuff that you normally find on your kitchen or in any grocery store. A boneless chicken breast, eggs, breadcrumb, Parmesan cheese, all-purpose flour, vegetable oil, mozzarella, basil, prepared tomato sauce, and spaghetti. These ingredients might be simpler, but I can use my chef skills to make something better. If I had to guess the price of all of these, $16.55. Nineteen dollars? You crazy? You can call me. I know a few people that they get it for cheaper. I would guess that this meal and all of these ingredients are probably around eighty-five dollars. Hundred and sixty-seven. <laughs> Don't want to mess this up. That's for sure. <laughs> Not left with any measurements or instructions. Uh. Burrata, so, oh, we're making the burrata. That's new. Burrata is a creamy mozzarella. We're gonna cut it in half, and so the cheese is going to cover all the uh, all the chicken parmesan, so you got cheese everywhere. Without further ado, it's time to call Rose. <laughs> Hi, Rose! Hey, Gabby! <laughs> we got a big, beautiful meal going on today. We are going to be making heritage chicken parmesan with homemade burrata and arrabbiata sauce so wow i mean let's start with the big the big one the the chicken i know today's all about getting the breast meat and i want to make sure that i do it perfectly so first of all you have a heritage chicken which is a real luxury we're going to focus on the breast but you want to make sure i would use every inch of this bird take a really sharp knife Okay. Peel the, the bone and cut along the bone as closely as you possibly can. Use the meat any way you like, and then you want to kind of roast off the bones and make a stock. That's what I would do. I know you're going to do really, really well with the whole thing. Bye, Rose. Bye, Bye Gabby. It's hard not to feel really good and really hype after speaking with Rose. So let's make some chicken parmigiano. I'm Let's do this. So right here I know is the breastbone. So I'm gonna use this as kind of like my guide and just a couple more foul swoops. <laughs> foul swoop. Sorry. We have my chicken breast. Look at that. I have this beautiful chicken breast. So basically, I'm gonna cut it from the bottom side. I'm gonna do this butterfly style. This chicken is turning into a beautiful butterfly today. Just go gentle, press a little bit. Not cutting the whole way through, and voila! Now it's in the shape of a heart. <laughs> one small win, one big win of the, of the butterfly. So we're gonna start with this side of the hammer. Don't worry about the thin parts. 
take out some frustration. All those Zoom calls. Now we switch to the smooth side. All right, let's see. Yep. Do you see the heart? That's all the love that I have for all of you. <laughs> Our chicken breast is ready to be dredged. All porto flour, plain breadcrumbs. Thank you, Gabby, for the plain breadcrumbs. <laughs> Put my flour in this pan. I'm so sorry, guys. Clean up on aisle two. Put a little bit of flour here. Some of our panko, whatever didn't end up on the floor. Little of salt here for the flour, like pepper. Parmesan, so tempted to like dump the rest of it into my mouth. My garlic powder in with my flour. Nick, this is very simple. You probably know, know how to do this already. The most beautiful eggs I have ever seen in my entire life. Whoa. Why waste the bowl? You can do it right here. Holy moly! I've never seen such bright eggs in my entire life. I cut this into a perfect circle because I have an idea. Wait and watch. Don't go anywhere. Put the flour, then remove the paper. I'm actually going to go ahead and add some salt at this time. Then do the egg wash. And then last but not least, there you go. nice. Cover this baby. All right. Look at that. And there you have it. My chicken is coated in my breadcrumbs and Parmesan. It's prepped and ready to cook. This is my vegetable oil, so it's up to temp now. For this, I use vegetable oil. One way to find out if it's really hot or not. If it makes big noise, that means it's, it's uh, super hot. Or you can use a thermometer, which I don't have and I don't need because I'm an old school guy and I do whatever I want in my life. Two minutes on each side. Those panko breadcrumbs are gonna get really, really, really crispy and crunchy. You don't wanna just drop it like crazy. You wanna drop it like, drop it like it's hot. <laughs> I'm gonna Put my thing down, flip it, and reverse it. Nice. When Missy Elliott wrote <laughs> Work It, she was absolutely talking about making chicken parmesan. It's a fact. Don't do this at home. I have a metal hand. Just keep pressing so you have a nice gold crust. I, I was a little premature in my flip, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip it and reverse it one more time. For not to have done any, but alas. Yes. Beauteous. How do you know when your chicken is ready? Raw meat, it's very wombly. Wombly, if it's very firm, that means it's cooked. All right, that's good. And here is our panko parmigiano reggiano crusted chicken breast. There you have it, our fried chicken for a chicken parmesan. So I have these beautiful heirloom tomatoes. They're a work of art in and of themselves. So take my olive oil. All right, hold on. <laughs> and I'm gonna be pretty generous with this because it's all gonna go into my sauce. Add my sugar. We don't wanna go overboard with the sugar. We, we just wanna neutralize some of the acid generous pinch of salt. Uh, we're gonna keep it really simple, just two halves, face them down. And then last but not least, <laughs> bruise the baked potato. Oh, it's so cool. I'm gonna do a little more salt, a little pepper, and then we're gonna pop them in the oven. 400 degrees for 20 minutes. Smell absolutely amazing. I can't wait to add them to the sauce. Dice up my aromatics. The thing that makes this a true arabiata, the Calabrian chilies. Take out a few and take the top off and add in some of my olive oil. We're gonna put a lot of this in here. If you're a bartender, I feel like you kind of know, you know, like what a glug looks like, so. So while these are cooking down, I'm gonna peel the skins off my tomatoes. I don't think there's anything wrong with the jar of tomato sauce that I gave Saul, but I think all of the extra labor really translates. Look at that, how satisfying. One, one and done. Gabby sent me this tomato sauce uh, on a jar, which is great, but I can add something special. Since, you know, I like spicy stuff, I'm gonna add Mr. Pepper, which I'm gonna bliss one for garnish on top of the sandwich a little bit of vegetable oil. Uh, this will make you cough because we are in spicy to the hot oil. I push the oil to one side and then we're just gonna let it blister. Also, that oil, it becomes more spicy. A little bit of salt, 
I'm gonna add this into the garnish of my chicken parmesan. Looks delicious and it smells delicious. Chop my basil up, get that ready to go. Let's see what we're working with now. It's so beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and start by dumping in all this liquid. Woo! Well, the tomatoes are really, really eager to get into. It's amazing how much liquid there is, but it's all just the natural liquid and oil from pretty simple ingredients. Expensive, simple ingredients, but simple ingredients. <laughs> Dice this with everything inside, because I want to make sure that it's spicy. I'm going to cook it, and I shut the heat off, no heat. Remove it to one side, and kind of put it in one side. See? Now the heat can go back on. So I'm gonna cook this 15 minutes, very low heat. This is our mill. So as you can see, there's some of these nice little holes down here. That's going to make the uniform texture. Oh yeah, looking good. I basically got about everything I could out of the food mill. So I'm thinking that I may not have reduced this enough. Oh my gosh, it's just, looks so rich, but I want it to be just a little bit thicker. Just put it right back into my saucepan. Leave the lid off to let some of that moisture escape. All right, so I got this mozzarella cheese, the chicken parmesan, you put it on top of the chicken, and then you finish it in the oven. To grab the oven, you have a melted cheese. The way I like to have my melted cheese is on a fundido, a cheese fondue. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna do a queso fundido. So I'm gonna cheat just a little bit. I'm gonna get a little bit of heavy cream, that's it. I only got heavy cream, nothing else. That's just to melt the cheese. So please, people, give me a break. Do some black pepper, and then we're gonna add the cheese. I want the mozzarella to melt all the way. There we go. Making a fundido is the best way to get rid of all, all your leftover cheeses that you have on your fridge. Parmesan cheese, so it's a two cheese fundido. So just medium heat, low heat, go back and forth. I'm only making one, so, so I'm gonna add more cheese. <laughs> so now we're just gonna stop cooking it and just keep stirring. There we go. Fundido, it's ready. I'm ready to dive into this burrata. From what Rose mentioned, this is a type of a pasta filata cheese, so it means that it's stretched and pulled. And I have salted boiling water, and you're gonna put your curds in, let it rest in there for two to three minutes. Nice. I'm gonna go ahead and grab it. <laughs> oh no, okay. This is, this is actually, a little challenging. Hold this. Oh, it's hot. It's super hot. I'm sure Saul, he probably reaches in with his bare hands. You want to work the uh, cheese and it's nice and elastic. That means that you can actually do any shapes that you want with a... Yeah. This could potentially be the most fun thing I've ever done on the show. <laughs> Shred that into little pieces and then add the heavy cream a little bit of salt, and that will be your stracciatella, the inside of the burrata. Set this off to the side. My goal is to turn this into that beautiful piece of mozzarella, turn it into a ball, feel it. Yeah, oh yes. This is, this is what dreams are made of, right here. Wow. I'm gonna be very generous with the size of disc that I have. Lay this over my bowl. Layer in my stracciatella and bunch this up. It's so pliable, but then it also wants to wrestle with you. <laughs> so, okay, this feels pretty good. Give it a dip in here to seal off all the edges and then it's gonna go into my ice water. Here we go. Here's my burrata. <laughs> Looks kind of like a like a dumpling. Okay, so Gabby sent me this uh, lovely box of simple spaghetti. <laughs> I'm gonna cook it, and I'm gonna make a spaghetti buns for my chicken parmesan sandwich. You didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> for boiling water, salt. This is for the first bun, and this is for the uh, one on the top. The box says 10 minutes for al dente. We just need 13 minutes because we want the pasta to be flexible. Otherwise, my buns are not gonna come out good. Cold water. We want the noodles to be like my heart. Ice cold. <laughs> and here's my pasta. 
Okay, so we're gonna do an egg, a little bit of Parmigiano Reggiano, a little bit of salt. We're gonna turn this on into medium heat, a little bit of vegetable oil, grab our pasta to add the egg. We don't want to do the entire egg. I don't want this to be an omelet. Otherwise, I would call it omelet chicken parmesan. Okay. So now, you want to push it to the side. Make sure it's pressed evenly. I want this to be nice and gold on the edges, and then we're going to flip it. Since we're waiting for that one to finish, we're going to do the second bun. This looks good. There we go. Ta-da! Looks crispy. So I'm going to keep cooking this. But I'm, I'm going to finish this and do the other one and get ready to assemble. There you have it. Our two spaghetti buns for our chicken parmesan. If I know anything about Chef Saul, I know his love for cheese. We are going to use this cacio cavallo for obviously our salad, but the main event, you're gonna go ahead and fry it. I'll start with the ribbon for my salad. I definitely wanna have a little taste of this. Let's see. Mmm. Wow. It's really salty, it has a little bit of a bite to it. It has like a sourness. I'm gonna cut off a little bit of this rind just so that I'm not shredding that. And I'm gonna aim for about a cup. Parmesan cheese here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make a Parmesan cheese frico. So basically it's fried, fried cheese. And that's something that I like to add to my salads when I eat salads once a month. Let's start with the cheese, medium heat. There we go, maybe it's too hot. I did it really hard in the beginning because I don't want the cheese to stick into the pan. All right, so the cheese is melting. I'm just gonna pass it right here. I only cook it one side. I'm gonna let it sit here and it's gonna, it's gonna become crispy. So I'm gonna make another one just in case. It's doing the dance. Now it dances. Now we're just gonna put it here. And there you have it. Parmesan frico for my chicken parmesan. That's pretty good. I think that that's gonna spread out enough. I remember when I watched Saul make his burrito, he let this get really nice and brown and then did this literal magic trick where he flipped it then. That's what I wanna do with my cheese. I'm gonna let that get brown, put the chicken into my cashew cavallo. <laughs> I almost forgot it, I remembered. Flip it on the plate. <gasps> I'm so scared every time. So here we go. And <laughs> I look at that. I think it's like the perfect amount of brown. Just got some nice brown crisping going on. This was the missing puzzle piece. And uh, now I think we're ready to put everything together. Time to plate, let's do this. And start with my fresh arugula, a nice little handful, cause this is all going on the plate more or less. So add in my olive oil and balsamica, shreds of the cacio cavallo, pinch of salt and some fresh ground pepper. I have my beautiful sauce, has reduced a lot compared to the last time. Beautiful piece of chicken, this right? here and put on my beautiful labor of love, my burrata. And then I'm gonna do that thing where you open it. Yeah. Last but not least, a nice handful of this arugula salad. So we're gonna start with these beautiful spaghetti buns that I just made. And then we're gonna add some tomato. The chicken, yes, more tomato. The spaghetti buns, it's pasta and it's fried, so it's gonna need a lot of cheese. Look at this beauty. I'm gonna make sure we put it all over. The bacon of my sandwich, Parmesan Frico. And now we're gonna do a little basil. Wait, there is more. <laughs> you remember this from the beginning? Okay, stay, stay, stay. That's the one to stay. I'll make it stay. Taran, say hello to my little friend. <laughs> this is the first chicken parmesan sandwich with spaghetti buns that exists in the entire world. I just Google it. Nice. Let's remove this part. Let's see. Let's just be gentle. Should I get all the layers? Delicious. Oh, molding greens are there. 
it's just more texture, more crispy, a little more heat. I don't know, Jose, more tasty. One, two, three, go. Oh, it looks so good. I'm so excited. I want to get a good bite, so let's see if I can even get a little bit of mozzarella. Let's see. Mmm. First of all, cheese. <laughs> but crunchy and kind of sweet almost. And you obviously taste the cheese, but the chicken itself is just very, very moist, tender, and it has just a really, really nice flavor to it all on its own. It's <laughs> it's the best chicken parm I've ever had. I think Chef Saul will think I did a good job. Hi, Chef Saul. How are you? Good, happy, excited. I just had my first taste of your chicken parm recipe, and I'm blown away. Do you want to see it? Please, I, mean, I can't wait. I can't wait. Okay, I've been waiting okay, all this okay, time. Okay, okay. Flip it. What do you think? Beautiful. I couldn't wait any longer. Yeah, so there's my burrata. I can see the burrata is very creamy. That was my only worry. I was like, oh, I don't think she's going to pull it up, but you did. Congrats. Yeah? That looks amazing. Oh my God. I need to see what you did. Okay, but what so are, let me see. Okay. Go? I hope you can see it. I don't know. Hold on. Uh, there we go. Oh my God. Okay, so wait, how did, is that a, are those patties with the spaghetti? Yeah, that's a spaghetti, uh, spaghetti buns. Oh my God. <laughs> well, I'm gonna need your recipe of my recipe. <laughs> I can try it next time too. 